loud, we believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We believe in miracles. Hallelujah. Be seated. Thank you. To be in a church with life is living. To be in a church with death is dying. Sometimes pastors like Moses are not too common. Pastors like Joshua who can say to the son, stand there till I finish my message. They are not very common. Pastors who believe in miracles is what the church needs today. When you read about Jesus, you are hearing his word when you read the Bible. When a preacher like me or any of us stand up and open the Bible and say, turn to Matthew chapter 4, turn to Luke chapter 4, turn to John 3.16, all we are telling you from the scripture is what Jesus would have said if he's standing physically. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? My statement tonight is this. If Jesus were here in physical form, and you say, welcome Jesus, and this is he, what he would say to Dr. Peter Lenica tonight would be, you look nice. You look good. Words that come out of Jesus' mouth are words of encouragement. He met a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Jesus wasn't the one that caught him, her. Men caught her and brought her to him. And Jesus looked at her. The men had stones in their hand to stone her to death for committing adultery. And Jesus, they said to Jesus, see, this woman, she's rotting. We caught her in the very act of adultery. And Jesus said, lovely. Thank you, you caught her. You haven't come to tell me you prayed for her. You have not come to tell me you asked her to confess her sin. You are catchers of sinners. Who is the actor in the act? Thank God I, you didn't hear that English. You who caught her, who was the actor? Because you caught her in the act. Which among you men was the one having adultery with her? Because if you caught her in the very act, somebody was acting. Who among you? And they said, we are not the one. Put it. <laughs> it is easy to show sinners how they sin. God is not looking for sin pointers. God is looking for sin forgivers. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. I show you your sin, but Jesus take it from you. Who will you follow if you were a man? A sin shower or a sin taker? I didn't hear you. Talk back to me. Whom will you follow? The man who tells you how bad you are, the man who says you are bad but I will repay you, whom will you follow? The man who, who can repair your life. Yes or no? Yes. That's it. That's the person you should follow. If Jesus were standing here tonight, he would say, Dr. Peter, you've never been as handsome as this. You're so lovely. Thank God for your wife. She must have been the one who chose this tie for you. Jesus would talk like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus shows the way out of darkness. He doesn't put people in darkness. He sees the worst sinner, he helps him out of sin. He sees the man very sick when I was preaching. I began to look at the act of Jesus, the action of Christ. For example, they came to call him and said, The man whom thou love is dead. He's sick. First he's sick. Come and heal him, which is easy. Come and heal him is easier than come and raise him. Do you believe that? <laughs> They went, he, he said, tell them I'm coming. Day one, he didn't come. Day two, he didn't come. Day three, he didn't come. Day four, he rose up from where he was preaching. He said, let's go wake him up. He's sleeping. No pastor talk like that today. Pastor sent condolence card. 
Jesus wake the dead up. Can I hear you say hallelujah? hallelujah. The, the, the disciples say, if he's sleeping, there's no need to trouble him. Let him rest in peace. Jesus said, in your language, it means he's dead. Let's go and wake him up. Let's raise him up. And they say, don't forget that people hate you. They will kill you. If you go there, they have said they are going to kill you this week. I don't want to be part of our assassination uh, uh, team. He said, let's go. There are 12 hours in the day. Light, 24 hours. Light, 12. Darkness, 12. Let's go and wake him up. And they followed him gradually. When he got to the gate of the city, here came Mary in tears. Oh, Lord, you disappointed me. You didn't go. My brother is dead. Now he's buried. Oh, God, look at what you did. I gave you food. I gave you water. Now I have need. You didn't come. If thou were here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, no problem. Did he really die? He said, it's stinking. It's all right. Let's go. Go show me where, you, where he's buried. And they followed. Very close to the house. Here came Martha, the woman who always spent all her hours in the kitchen. She came. Lord, if thou were here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, that's not the problem. I'm resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, even though he were dead, yet shall he live. The question is, do you believe? And I'm asking everybody tonight, do you believe? Yes. I'm not asking you whether you came to church. Do you believe? Yes. He said, I know he will rise on the resurrection morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. Jesus said, not that time, but today. I'm going to raise him up today. And he asked the most astonishing question that he is not being asked in the church today, including me. I don't ask the question. Where do you bury him, you who have the gift of burying the dead? And they said, it's in the sepulchre, very close, let's go and see. They followed him, I said, he said, right? Is that where you buried him? Listen to the question. Where did you bury him? Show me where you buried him. Not, not where I should bury him. The question is, where did you bury him? Jesus will give you a question to challenge your faith, to see how you will answer. Where did you bury him? They say, see, it's okay. Take away the stone. That's job number one. They took away the stone. Listen, I preached that message here before. And Jesus, the Bible said, lifted his head up. Take away the stone. They took away the stone. Instead of Jesus looking at the grave, he looked up. He said, Father, thank you. Everybody say that. You heard me already. Say that. Father, thank you. Father, You've heard me, you me already. How can someone be in the grave and you are thanking the Father for hearing you already? That's what he wants to say. He said, not because of me, but because of these hundreds of people that are here in Penel Miracle Center tonight. Glorify your name in our midst and show your power. Because when there's no miracle, no Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And he said, thank you. Then he looked down. He looked up first before he looked down. He saw his father first before he looked at the grave. Then he now looked at the grave and said, aha, uh -huh, the stone is away. Lazarus, come forth. All the elders in the church, all the deacons, all the associates, hey, come, come here. Mary had already said he's stinking. And Jesus said, that's why I'm going there. He's rotting. I'm socializing in a rotting situation. Just in case you are rotting tonight and you are in a rotting situation, here comes Jesus to tell you, come out. Amen. I say, come out. Amen. No matter how rotten your situation is in business, in marriage, in home, in education, in situation, there's a razor of the rotting situation. He say, he's here tonight. Amen. Come forth. And the Bible says, and he that was dead, say that everybody. English of the Bible is confusing. How can he die and was dead? If he was dead, he was dead. He's not dead. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and feet. In history, in medicine, in education, in science, you can't come out bound hand and feet. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. Johnson, are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are dead and you are tied, your hands tied, your feet tied, you can't come forth. 
unless somebody bring you forth a power beyond man's understanding a power beyond the power beneath the grave when jesus said comfort there was a force at the comfort is comfort is anybody hearing what i'm saying comfort comfort that force just said lazarus we've lost you go Comfort! Go, Lazarus! Your master is calling you. That man has come here again to disturb us. We have held you for four days. Think of it. Decomposed, the Bible said. Smelling, the Bible said. Rotting, the Bible said. How can he decompose? How can he be rotting? How can he be smelling and comfort? The man whom you cannot ask questions is the one who told him to come out. Amen. You say, my hair have left my head. That's prosperity. <laughs> you say, I don't know what to do. That's why you are here. Amen. The man who knows what to do is present tonight. Amen. Respond, please. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You say, I'm very down. The man lower than where you are in the bottom. No pit is too deep that God's hand is not beneath. And no height is so high to catch up with the most high. Somebody say amen. amen. They threw him up bar. And suddenly, I, I can't explain it, but imagine it. I'm only asking you to imagine it. Bound, tied, leg, hands, face, bandage, stood up. And Jesus said, it's okay. You're out already. You who tie him, lose him, and let him go. It's not enough to get out of the grave. You better be loose and go. Amen. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. If you come out of the grave, that's step one. Be loose to go. If you are born again, that's nice. Be loose to go. If you are healed, nice. But be loose to go. Don't come out of the grave and behave gravely. Thank you. Don't act like a man that is still in the grave. Tell all who tied your faith down to lose you and let you go. They lose him. And guess what happened? Jesus preached in Bethany for three years with only three converts. But when Lazarus got up, 42,000 people gave their life to Jesus. One miracle would discomfort all your enemies. If you preach science and wonder, you don't steal converts, you make converts. Nobody will fight you and say, you took my, all my members and I in your church. No, they told me that in 1974, a preacher in my city. He said, now that you are stealing all my members, I'm going to blackmail you as if you blackmail me, God will whitemail me. Yeah. You do your part. He said, I will kill you. I said, you can't do that. That's only where you have no authority. He came to my house. He said, Benson, I've told you, now that all my choir are now your choir, my members are now your members, and I warn you, you refuse, I'm going to kill you. I said, brother, I will attend your funeral service. I said, brother, I will attend your funeral service. I told him, it's very dangerous to tell me you will kill me, because I have a consuming fire, God. I don't say, you don't tell me I will kill you, then I look for people to go and beg you. I can't do that. You tell me you kill me, I tell you I bury you. And if need be, heaven will intervene. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. I told him, and you guess what? I was going to travel the day I heard he died. I postponed my trip to attend his funeral. Don't tell anybody who wants to kill you, I'm, I'm sorry. If you say he want to kill you, tell him you attend his funeral. And I went to the wake keeping. Everybody said, I said, I said, I said, oh yes, I'm here. I did all I can do for 20 years to go close to him. He put a bridge. He put a wall there. I built a bridge he destroyed. I built a bridge he destroyed. Every month he would put my name in paper, CIA. First man would come to me, are you really CIA? I said, yes. Christian International Ambassador. <laughs> I am. They say, how much do they pay you? I say, free offering. 
I get free offering. No, we want to know the truth. Are you really a seer? I say, I am. Because if I tell you I'm not, you are not going to believe. So I am. I am. You are a seer. Hey, sure. How can he pay me? America doesn't have the money I need. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, not from abroad. Somebody hear what I'm saying when I say hallelujah. I prefer to be a bigger, not a beggar. I prefer you think I'm rich than to show you I'm poor. If you see me dressed like this, you know I have no cash in my pocket. That's better for me than for me to dress like rag. So you can say very poor. God forbid. Jesus took all my burdens away. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lose him and let him go. And they lose him and he went. Today, who is God looking for? Losers of the bound. Raisers of the dead, healers of the sick, joy makers. Don't say I'm not a pastor. Let somebody sitting near you in the choir be very happy that he's sitting near you every time. The way you behave, the smile from your face. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? I used to have friends that have six o'clock every evening. Every day they, they have six o'clock face. I tried to make it quarter to 12. <laughs> because you go to heaven earlier when you are not smiling. It takes 2,800 nerves to be angry. I took only 54 to smile. Why not you take 54? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know when you are tense, your whole blood shrink. You are sick suddenly. Because you are not happy. And you live longer when you are happy. When you see a man like this come, I'm alive! He's telling you whom he is. He's not telling you you. I don't know whether it makes sense to you. If you hear him say, I'm alive! He's not telling you are alive. He say, ah. So if you want to be like me, be alive. You say, I don't like him. He, does not, he doesn't do anything to him. It's you who doesn't like him. He likes himself. God made us in his image and his likeness. Somebody said, God likes me. That's Genesis. God made you in his image and likeness. And if God likes you, the rest of people can knock their head to the wall. Doesn't matter. You said the reason they don't like me is because I'm low, I'm short. No. For short people, Jesus said, low, I'm with you always. <laughs> Thank you. Clap it very well. Clap your hands. They didn't hear it in Benjamin. All short people. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 28, Lo, I'm with you always. <laughs> Jesus said, if you refuse to be tall, I come near you on the floor. <laughs> Turn with me tonight to Exodus. Exodus. Chapter 4. Verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my God, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here, heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who had made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now therefore, go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, 
Send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall say. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Say with me, take the rod. Say it. In thy hand. Use it for signs. Carry your Bible. Take the rod. Say it, everybody. In your hand. And begin to do signs. Say it loud. Take the rod in your hand. And begin to do signs. Was Moses in the Bible school? No. In chapter 3, verse 1, you are told that he was just watching over a sheep. His, his father-in-law ship, Jethro. That's where God called him and said, Moses, in chapter 3, from verse 1 to 16, you see how God told him, Moses, you have been carrying this rod for a long time. You don't even know what's inside and you don't know what to do with it. That's how many Christians are carrying Bible. Copeland is coming to London. Hallelujah. And he sings, majesty, worship his majesty. You begin to cry. When he leaves, the tears are over. Then God brings Dr. Sarulo to London. Sarulo is coming. Praise God. The Lord asked me to win one billion souls. You say, oh, Sarulo, praise God. One billion souls. He leaves. Next month, Billy Graham is coming. Hallelujah. Billy Graham, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. This is a man of integrity, I'm telling you now. 52 years, four years after I was born, he started preaching. He's still preaching with dignity and respect. He makes what I call half of the stadium give their life to Christ. You close your Bible again until you hear his born is coming. You have never asked yourself, why is it that the Bible is real when other people ask me to open it? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. Then, after two weeks' time, you know, is coming. Mm, he may ask me offering today. And you know I'm going to do that. <laughs> because I, <coughs> I can never cease to respond to your prayer. When you say he's going to ask me offering, I'm going to ask you because you already prayed. If you have shut your mouth, I wouldn't ask for offering. But because you say he's going to ask, I will ask you. But it's not the offering that keeps me alive. It's the word. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? The word of God has kept me 56 years. And has kept me in the ministry 35 years and 9 months. There's power in the word of God. God said there's something in your hand. It's for surprises. It's for surprises. He's to do signs. Say do. The Bible is not just carry it. He do with it. For the sick is a healing. For the bound is a loser. For the weak is strength. For the hungry is food. For those that are chained, there's a losing power inside it. For the dead is resurrection. Somebody say hallelujah. Take the rod in your hand. With it, do signs. And Moses said, truly, let's see what Moses said. Verse 17. Let's read it together. Are you there? And thou shalt take. What did he say you should do? Excuse me. Do what? I said do what? Look at simple mathematician. Mathematics. Thou shalt take this rod in thy hand. It's already there. Take it. 
If you don't open this Bible, it will be a black book. But if you take it and open it, it becomes science book. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Take it in thy hand. Where will thou do signs? Verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh. Say wonders. wonders. Talk back to me. Say wonders. wonders. Aren't you tired of wondering? I say, are you not tired of wondering? Yes. Only when a preacher is coming to town, you hold your Bible. When I finish preaching, you say, the house has said this, the house has said this, the house has said this, Sarulo says this, Osborne says this, Copeland says this, Billy Graham says this. What has God said? Because if all of us say what we want to say, right or wrong, what has God said? Because if God says nothing, you have wasted your time. No matter who preach, whether they preach with fire and brimstone, if you don't believe it, there shall be no signs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I was in Kenya, 1974. That's where God first brought the Hambonki to my crusade. 12,000 people jammed the Jomo Kayenta Center. A woman who had been in my crusade at Kamkuji ground, 250,000 people every night. Blind, saw, lame, walk, deaf, head. I didn't lay hand on anybody. The last day of the crusade, I announced, Colin, I said, tomorrow at the Jomo Kayenta Center, I'm going to address all preachers and lay workers and teachers and believers. She told the taxi driver, say, I'm going. The taxi driver said, they are talking of pastors. He said, I'll become one tomorrow. Amen. But the man said, you are blind and you are crippled. He said, that's why I'm going. He will heal me and I become a preacher the next day. Amen. Blind and crippled. 55 years old. The next morning, they carry... <laughs> He said, that door, he said, put me near there. All my security staff, the police sent by the government of Kenya, followed me up and down. I came to the hall, I preached for three hours, taught pastors. 12,000 ministers from the whole of East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, different places, Dar es Salaam, they all were there. When I said, let's stand up to close in prayer, they all stood. Miracles everywhere, everywhere. When I was going, she asked somebody, say, which door is it going to pass? They say, here. The door that people knew I was going to pass, security said, that's not the door. They said, take here. When I was going, I heard the Holy Spirit say, go that side. So I told them, I told them, I said, let's go this way. They said, people are waiting there. There's one blind cripple. I said, let's pass there. Let's pass there. As she heard the feet of those Escorting me. Gri, 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 gri. She said, like, where is he, where is he? She swept her hand. Touch my suit. Her eyes open. Her legs straightened. And Kenya National Newspaper carried it. 55 years. Blind, deaf, crippled. Today she's a preacher in, in East Africa. How? She believed before she got it. You understand? At the end of the crusade, many would have been angry. He did heal me. I have never healed anybody since I was born. But she said, I will see tomorrow. I will walk tomorrow. And that day, even though I was going away, the healer was in town. And he has healer in the town today. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Take the rod in your hand. Tomorrow do signs. Today do wonders. Don't carry the Bible painfully. Carry it prayerfully. Don't carry it as a heavy load. Carry it as a burden discharging. Whenever you open your Bible, open it with joy. Open it with happiness. See that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand. But I will harden his heart, and he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, 
Thus says the Lord is of God of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Let my people go. Take the rod in your hand. Verse 17. Do miracles. Let's go to chapter 7. Turn your Bible to Exodus chapter 7. Quickly, let's now rush and see. Chapter 7. Exodus 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the water that were in the river turned to blood. Say rod. rod. Somebody say rod. rod. When you begin to use your Bible for signs and wonders, the wicked kings of this earth will know you are serving a living God. The reason the church is being threatened by government night and day is that the church is no more showing signs and wonders. When the church hears of any news of accusation or persecution, she hides for prayers. She goes for all night to make noise. They go for all night prayer. They, they get there. Give me a chair. Give me a simple chair. There. Give me a smaller chair. Give me one. This is all night. It's now 11 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Come on. Thank you, Brother Colin. Thank you very much. We are here. We are gathered together in this place. They said they are going to kill us. We are God, the Lord, in your presence. We call your name. What did they say? Did they say they are going to kill us? <laughs> what have we done? What have we done? No. Oh, Lord, my God, <laughs> when I'm in my wonders, <laughs> I consider all the trouble that I see. Then I see my soul, my Savior God, to trouble more. How weak thou art, how weak and great thou art. From nine o'clock in the evening to six o'clock in the morning, Moses will see such a situation. I say, Pharaoh! Everybody say, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Let my people go. He doesn't go to all night. He doesn't go to all night. There's power in the word of God. I believe in all night, but I don't believe in all noise. Nobody have all night like me on earth. I don't think so. At least four nights a week, I'm on all night. You can't have signs and wonders and preach the type of message I preach without having all night. But not noise night. It's prayer night. Are you hearing me? I said, did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Paul and Silas locked up in cell. Paul and Silas, they prayed, they sang. And who came down? Holy Ghost came down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what it is. You suppose you get to the bank, which we are going to get to just now. Look at the Red Sea and, two, and three million Pharaoh army behind you. And Moses said, Peter, we are going to have one night this evening till tomorrow. What do you think Pharaoh and his troops would have done? All night. They got to the Red Sea. It's there. I'm going to read it just now. God said, Moses. He said, yes, Lord. Say, what, do you, what is that in your hand? Ask me, everybody. Talk back to me. Rod. rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. And God said, Pharaoh is in your back, and the rest is in your front. Go forward. And Moses said, did you know what you are saying, Lord? The rest is more red today than yesterday. 
is red than now. It's blood. And God said, that's why you should go forward. If the situation is too tough, don't go back. Go forward. You die quicker when you go back. Die later when you go forward. He said, go forward. He said, God, you didn't see what you are talking the Red Sea. God said, what do you have in your hand, complainer? He said, Lord, he said, stretch it forth. And every time I, I have prayed the Red Sea for over 30 years before I knew that it was not when Moses said, see, then from the beginning, the Red Sea is 8 miles by 16 miles. I hope you are aware of that. It didn't spread. Wow. Here come Moses. No. Sha. One foot. Not 10 feet, not one mile. And that's the forward. That the sole of your feet shall tread upon, become your own. That was how the Red Sea began to part and form block on this side and form wall on this side. Not immediately as they step forward. What did God say? What did God say? What did God say? Forward. What is happening to the river? Parting. What is happening to the people? Forward. I wish you know what you have in your hand. You would have argued less, blackmail less, and preach more. Because the time you spend in preaching people, if you use it to preach the Bible, you see signs and wonders. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They see parted. And they got to the other side. they didn't know is that in that chapter 14 the Bible said God led them across with high hand. There was an invisible hand. Can I show you? Chapter 14 verse 8. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. Say high hand. High hand. Now, they have not reached the Red Sea, when the Bible said they went out. Even though, th this is, Paul said, behold, I show you mystery. Even though they have not reached the Red Sea, the Bible said God let them out. They were already out. Pharaoh was seeing the people he's pursuing. But as far as God is concerned, they are already at the other side. God can blind your enemy. So you can get to where he sent you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let, let's, let me say this to you. And it's my prayer. May Pharaoh never pursue you when there's no Red Sea. May he chase you as far as he can do. But God let there be Red Sea first. Because that's the last time he will pursue you. from Pharaoh just said, God, I'm willing for all the enemies to pursue me, but Lord, let there be Red Sea first. Don't let anything happen to me until there's Red Sea. When we get to the Red Sea, we will know who is on the Lord's side. The devil can never pursue you next day if there's Red Sea in your front. It's only once. Everybody say once. once. Pursue them. God has already led them out. Before God said, what is in your hand? They already, the Bible said, they already went out. O-U-T, what? Out. Say out. out. As far as God is concerned, the battle was over before the pursuit started. Who took them out? God. With what? Hand. High hand. Wherefore, take that rod in thy hand and do signs and wonders. If you mention my name in Benin Judiciary today, you take my case to any court. It's on record. This judge said, not me. I don't want to die. 
They transfer it to the other one. He said, I don't want to die. You move it to the other car, I don't want to die. Why? Touch not my anointed. You have to prove yourself that you are not a wimp. You are a winner and not a loser. Somebody say, I'm a winner. I'm, a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm, not a loser. I'm, a winner. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm the head and not the tail. Say hallelujah. Today. Today. Recently I came back from abroad. They said there's one Muslim that had just been brought to custom and immigration. He doesn't want to see Christians at all. If you bring anything to Nigeria, he confiscates it. He does this one. He does this. I said, I'd like to see him. I got down from the plane. All the police that came to welcome me and other friends. Welcome, Your Grace. Welcome. I said, Thank you. I said, Where's the man? They said, I said, Ah, excuse me. How are you? What's your name? He said, I'm uh, Haji. I said, Oh, I'm glad to see you. Tell your boys to bring my boxes out when they finish. They are 17. Bring them out for me. He said, No problem, sir. One, two, three, five of you take his boxes out. That's the man they said he kills, he destroys. Make use of them. They are instruments in your hands. Supposing I say, Pastor Peter, do you know him? Can you help me? I, I just came from my I have 17 pieces. I got there from England, and there are TV equipments, and they are very expensive. They say he will seize it. Can we beg him for me? Man would have said, how much will you pay? But when I say, tell your boys, I went outside, let them bring it. Uh, he said, thank you, sir. Say thank you, sir. The day the devil will know you are not afraid, he will no more pursue you. What is that in thy hand? Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. If it becomes snake, they didn't fear, let it become blood. If it become blood, they didn't fear, look at chapter 9. Hallelujah. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Use what is in your hand that the world may fear you. We are becoming too cowardly. We were, in, we were in Holland, May this year. Somebody said, I was like, what you said? I don't like it. I'm going to tell uh, Benihin. I said, I will phone him by myself. Benihin knew me when he was 14 years old. There's no need for you to report me to him. Tell him. I'll call him by myself. I go to the hotel. I call him. I said, people are trying to imitate you in Holland. I've just told them that folly is not a gift. But if God give it to you, use it. He said, Papa, I know you. Next week, I went to preach for him. The people who reported me to him, told them, he said, I know him. He said, I doesn't lie. If you want to call anybody's name, you don't need to <laughs> tell him. And I do. The good in you, I say. But if you want to imitate them, I tell you no. No, you may try to shout like Shambak. You can never be Shambak. You may try to shout like Serulo. You may never be Serulo. Be yourself before you are anybody else. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And ask God, what is your gift? Chapter 9. Do you have your Bible there? Verse 23. Let's start from verse 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Shut forth thy hand toward heaven, that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt, upon man, upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses shut forth his rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. Stand to your feet and say rod. Get to your feet quickly. Rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. God says, stretch forth your rod. And the Bible says in verse 23, look at it, stand and read it. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven. And the Lord sent thunder and hail. And the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. Very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it began a nation. Can I hear you say amen? 
if you begin to do what God is telling you tonight, demons, you think demons can withstand fire? I'm asking you. You think little witches and wizards can withstand fire and hell? The reason they threaten you every time is because you are behaving like a wimp. When they know that you are not afraid, they fear God. They fear you. God says, shut your hand again. Look at the progress Moses is making. And to the glory of God, we are here as a church. We are here as a church. Not the church to beg the devil. No. Not the church to beg sickness. No. Command it to come out. And in the name of Jesus, it shall come out. Amen. Chapter 14. We read that before. Chapter 14, verse 16. Chapter 14, verse 16. God said in verse 15, Wherefore cry thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. If there's any sea that tries to stop your progress, divide it. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Divide it. Don't let any red sea stop your plan in life. No matter how red they are, put the rod before it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Paul the apostle went to pray for somebody. He, he prayed, be healed, no, be healed, no, be healed, no. If I... me hear God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. By the time he said the Lord God rebuke you. If it's tough, combine the name. Use the name of the Lord and use the name of God Almighty. Or hold the rod in your hand. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And I want to say this with a stone in your hand. Say that. And the word in your mouth. And the faith in your heart. Goliath will go down. Goliath will go down. Goliath will go down. With a stone in your hand. With a word in your mouth. With faith in your heart. Every giant will fall. Don't hold the Bible without doing something with it. You may ask for the greatest faith healer on earth to heal you. They can heal you in the church and you'll be dying in the house. Learn how to carry the rod in your hand. When Red Sea comes, say, part. When poverty comes, just say, you are the Lord that he let me. Poverty, I have God that provide all my needs. Sickness, I have God that heal me. Test, he quench my test. Fear is my boldness. Sorrow, the Lord is my joy. Somebody say, Hallelujah. hallelujah. That leg is your own. God gave you three, two legs. You just added a third one. Any day you are tired, drop the stick and you walk with your two feet. That's all. There's faith in your heart. Don't wait for anybody to come and lay hand on you. No. Be healed from today. I said be healed from today. Drop your walking. Drop it and begin to use your feet. God gave you leg. Drop it, my dear sister. Put it down. Come towards me. Come here. Come here. Give her your glass and come here without that terror. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Stand straight. Remain there. Remain there. It is not bad for you to have what you call this in England. What do you call this? Clutch. This is the third leg. If God needed us to have three, he would have given us four. Two at the back and two in the front. He knew that two can carry you. That's why I gave you two. This is assistant until you hear what you are hearing tonight. Now that you have heard what you are hearing tonight, the Lord God has healed you. As far as God is concerned, this is no more part of your life. Amen. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now walk back without it in the name of Jesus. You say I'm limping. Limp and walk. Go. In the name of Jesus. It's your leg. From this night, you'll be healed completely. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. God said to Moses, stretch for the road to the sea. It shall part. He parted. 
To the heaven, hail and thunder, it came down. To the river, blood. Why do we have the Bible for science and wonder? Not for you to come every Sunday to service. And my head, she pray, <laughs> I'm healed. Monday, my chest, be healed, I'm healed. How many of you have the Lord healed? I'm here. Monday, Tuesday, I mean, what is God? It, my back. Then Wednesday, my front. Thursday, my top. The other day, my bottom. It's time for you to use your Bible to say, by his stripes, I am healed. Amen. Divine health is better than divine healing. I like healing, but I want people to come to church jumping and singing. I'm alive. I'm alive. And I'm here tonight to pray for you once and for all. So that when sickness comes next time, you say, no, this body belongs to Jesus. When poverty comes, say, no, he was poor that I may become rich. When fear comes, say, I have faith. My faith takes over fear. And the Lord is there to heal me. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm what God says I am. Oh, no. I'm what God says I am. Now use your voice. I'm what God says I am. I'm a winner. I'm not a your two hands up. Lift up your two hands. Listen tonight. God finds no fault in you. God is training an army that devil will fear. He will not fear you when you are in the wheelchair. He will not fear you when you are in the hospital bed. He will not fear you when you are in the garbage heap eating with swine. And God will get no glory for you to be in the gutter. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Can I hear you say hallelujah? hallelujah. I stretch my hand to your hands. Wherever you are in this sanctuary tonight, may the same hand that lifted Jesus from the grave, brought him to life to die no more, be upon you this night. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, trace of sin be forgiven and every disease be healed tonight I put the sword of God by faith to your hands and after this night you will know that you know that you know greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world with this your hands signs and wonders shall be done the name of the Lord shall be glorified you are the head and not the tail. You are the loser of the bound and not the bound. You are the healer of the sick and not the sick. You are a blessing and not a curse. You are rich and not poor. I pronounce the word of God upon you. I lift up the Bible in my hand to say, May this rod God put in your hand tonight never drop in your hand. And God's name be glorified. In Jesus' name, every child of God say loud, Amen. Yeah. Yeah.